it's time to get ready. Got my thermals. Got our hat on, got our uniform on. It's time to go get busy. What we're gonna be working on is a generator. We're not gonna work on this generator because this is my generator and this is what I use to get my house up and going. This stays inside the garage where it's nice and warm and it, when it needs to run, I come over to it, I turn it on, I choke it, and then I start it right up. Got a little uh, cord there, goes right into my heavy duty plug there, which goes in my breaker box. I have a special disconnect built on it. It starts up, it runs, and it powers the whole house. It hasn't given me any problems yet. Granted, it's only got 81 hours, so it stays on standby. I got the battery replaced this year, and uh, I keep track of my uh, changes and stuff. I actually write down the hours that it was done at, what kind of oil I've got. So what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna go work on a home standby generator and uh, see what's wrong with it. The problem with today is that it's uh, about 15 degrees and it's snowy. Let's go take a look at it and see what's going on and see if it's not a battery issue, fuel issue, snow issue, or maintenance issue. Now, one of the other things I didn't mention it could be is the environmental. Some of these generators don't like to start when it's extremely cold. Now they do have cold weather kits for them that helps out quite a bit. And they've made some major improvements over the years with electronics changing like they do all the time. You know, the first generation didn't have choke, they didn't have heaters, they didn't have a lot of stuff. The brushes would freeze into place, they'd just have a fit. They'd lock out on under voltage because they couldn't make voltage because the brushes were frozen in place. A lot of things affected them. So. Uh, we're going to go take a look at this one. It just said it has a red light. I'm not sure exactly what it is that's causing it. So we're going to take a look at it, see what's going on. But, you know, something to consider before you guys go in to start servicing generators is think about what when you're going to be working on them. They always break when they're needed. When are they needed? They're needed in extreme cold, extreme hot, when it's raining, snowing, basically extreme crappy weather. So before you hop into it, just make sure you're ready to work in this kind of weather. I can't imagine why it may not have started and ran, but we'll take a look. You gotta remember, you gotta bring a shovel with you just in case, because as you can tell, the truck's not really built for snow. I mean, I weigh close to 10,000 pounds, but it uh, it's amazing how easy these can get stuck. So it, uh, what I'll do is I'll pull in, I'll back up and forth a few times, and that way I try to get myself a path, and I'll also try to point my nose to the road because it's a lot easier to get out. Let's, uh, let's go talk to the customer and find out what the complaint is. Can't get to the front door that way, so I guess we'll just walk through the back. Hopefully we can get to somebody. All right, well, they'll probably hear me out here working. There's no way to get to their door, and I don't think they want me trudging through the thing. So we have a RPM sense loss. Um, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, it's not your do-yourself channel. Like I said before, it costs money for us to go to school for these things. I am doing this for the guys that need extra help. Not saying I'm all that, because I don't do near the many as I used to. But um, a lot of times, you know, it's uh, just the normal things that need maintenance. You can see that the snow probably got sucked into there. And it wouldn't surprise me with these crazy temperatures those brushes might've froze. But that's just kind of prejudging it. I'm gonna see where we're at on our oil, make sure the obvious stuff's taken care of, which looks good enough for what I see. I'd like to check my filter, make sure we got ice and all that in there, which does not appear to be. Don't see any oil down there in the air filter area. Gotta be careful these boxes, man. They get cold and they get brittle. We'll go ahead and reset this thing, take it to off, enter, service form, sure, enter, switch to off, back to auto, ready to roll. Let's go to manual, see if it starts to start and run. And lucky there, RPM sense loss. You know what that is, boys and girls? That's we spend a lot of money on a generator, but we don't replace the battery when it needs replaced. Generally, the battery I recommend ch is changed every four years. I don't care if you normally get more out of that than that, but you spent this much money on it, spend the money on a new battery every four years. I'm going to go ahead and check the battery, make certain that that's what's going on, but I can just about tell you that's what's going on. That is probably one of my most common things. This is one of the newer ones, which... 
You gotta take this whole right hand corner off here, which I think it pops off on the side. I believe we gotta just take these out here, so I gotta go grab some tools. Kind is better for the overall part, but kind of a pain in the butt to get to otherwise. All right. So, first thing I seen was the battery cable they're using now is garbage. Look at that. I don't know when they went to this. It was fairly loose. These are some, some of the best batteries out there, the X side here. But when we check the uh, battery here, we put it under a load. It drops down about 10.4-ish area. The battery might be just a little bit low, but at the, at the age we've got here, I'm going to recommend we replace it. Uh, I bet you if we check the water levels, they're probably low also. So um, one thing about this cover, the way they switched it, which was pretty nice, is you can actually get the battery out. So that's pretty sweet. I mean, that was one big improvement. But this right here, those things are just asking to be broken off. So... Uh, if they would have made them out of something more resistant, I guess, it would have been fine. But, unfortunately, those just aren't cutting the mustard right there at all. Um, I'm going to uh, pop the top of that cover there and look in the water levels. Uh, I have mixed feelings on serviceable batteries or not. Myself, personally, I prefer serviceable batteries, but most people don't ever service them. So, I check the battery and water levels fine. I'm gonna leave it up to the customer, it's their money, let them make the decision. Uh, let's see if we can see a date on this out here too. Uh, August 17, is that what it is? Even if it is, I mean, it had a good connection, good enough that it would have transferred power to the uh, thing to start it. I'm going to hold that ground tighter to it. I'm gonna put a pair of vice grips on there and see if it'll start it. If it will, great. I don't like the fact that it's not charged and re relying on the charger of the generator to charge it's not a good idea. Uh, it's just a trickle charger. We went ahead and got a Vayer vice grips on there. This is on the negative terminal so we won't have no issues with shortening it's outside of the thing. I'm gonna see if this thing will start now. It does start. Customer says she wants it replaced either way. So that's a good sign. We'll go ahead and go get them one, uh, one of the batteries. That way they're good to go. Uh, Got to check through here and see how many hours are on it too. She wants to schedule up a maintenance on it. So it's good to know that this one's going to start. This is, uh, this is one of the newer ones, um, which these are the ones I've had the least problems with. Uh, I believe without going through my books. Cause like I said, I do maybe four or five of these a year now. I just don't do them like I used to. So the, um, the software on these ones is able to be updated through the USB port there. And they add us a few tricks to it to allow it to run longer so that it would uh, wear off any ice that gets on the brushes and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go get that real quick and get her put in here. All right, so we got her cut off here. I don't like these type of clamps. I like the solder on style, but I would have had to go all the way across town and spent quite a bit of extra time doing that. And since we're gonna come back and do the maintenance on this in the summer, I told her we could just bring those when we come back. I'm gonna go ahead and spray these terminals down and then get this uh, thing up and going. So that got that one done. It ended up being a simple one. I got stuck in her driveway back and back in. 
she had to pull me forward out of that and then I barely got back out it's starting to warm up a little bit we're up to 16 now so it must be softening up the eye uh, the snow a little bit she had that real fine pea gravel stone which doesn't get any traction so uh, batteries changed got it scheduled as you've seen in there she had 19 hours of runtime on it that's all it's ran now for the last uh, 18, 19, 20, 21. For the last four years, it's ran 19 hours. Um, so that's that. Uh, we got scheduled up for in the summertime when it's decent weather. Like I said, I don't like those clamps. I prefer the kind that you can solder on. They make a nice, good connection. But I didn't want to come all the way across town to go get it. So anyhow, that's just one of the simple things. So my advice to anyone out there that has a generator, uh, as far as homeowners, the only thing I recommend is keep your battery changed every four years. If you don't want to that's up to you you can pay somebody to come out at night time or on the weekend and you can pay twice as much uh, or uh, you know you can just be proactive and get it taken care of uh, the cost of the generator is very uh, costly so a couple bucks for a battery is not uh, that much money when you look at it in the realm of things so anyhow um, that's gonna wrap that one up if you like it you know what to do until next time guys we'll catch you on the next one